Hello and welcome to our Circuit of Ireland training video. This session focuses on incident management. There's every chance when working as a marshal that you'll end up dealing with an incident. Don't let that worry you or put you off. Assistance will be with you as soon as possible. However, there are certain actions that you need to follow to ensure the correct assistance gets to you. It's those points that we're going to try and cover in this training session. This session will provide you with guidance on how to do that without putting yourself or others at risk. Firstly, not every incident ends up with some sort of a threat to human life. Your management of people and risk is a major contributor to that fact. However, if you don't get it right, the risk increases dramatically. When an incident occurs, the people that are most at risk are the people on the ground, not people in the rally car. The people on the ground um, have no protection on them. The only protection they have, and it's damn good, is the protection that you provide. So when you get them to stand in areas that are safe, areas that are not deemed to be dangerous or prohibited, then that's the best we can do to keep them safe. When it comes to the rally drivers, well, why are they so safe? Well, let's have a look exactly what's going on there. So what's the rally driver got to protect them? Well, from the inside out, fire retardant underwear, a three layer race suit, which is fire retardant, some gloves that are, guess what? Fire retardant, a balaclava, which is fire retardant and makes me an awful lot prettier, and a crash helmet, which believe it or not, not only protects the head from the, it's also fire retardant. Even the race boots are fire retardant. So that's, that's me protected for fire. Then we've got this thing. Let's have a look inside it next. Okay, so inside the car, what can we see? Well, down on the floor, there's a fire extinguisher. That's a handheld fire extinguisher, which can be taken out. Rally cars also have fire protection systems, which allows you to put a fire from inside the car or outside of it. This system is called the fire reader. These things can be messy, but they can be life savers. Okay, what else we got inside the car? Let's have a look. Okay, inside a rally car is probably one of the safest places you can be. Bucket seats, a roll cage. If I had the choice of where to be, I'd prefer to be in this car than be a spectator stand behind a five bar gate. In this section, we're going to look specifically at the car and the occupants of the car and how you'll deal with them if there's an incident. Okay, that was a bit of a whistle stop tour of Rab Subaru. And she's by no means perfect or by no means a modern rally car. In fact, she'd be an embarrassment beside the modern rally car when it comes to safety standards. But back in the 1990s, they were tough, you know, too. While those older cars were tough, they didn't have the technology that we have in the modern rally car. On this year's circuit, every rally car will have a tracker device fitted. That tracker device will let us know where each car is at any time over the weekend. So if a car stops on a stage or in a road section, we'll know exactly where it stopped. If there's two or three cars stop at the same place, then we know there's trouble and alarm bells will go off. So while our radio points are five kilometers apart and certain areas we won't have mobile phone signal, we do have other means of keeping our eyes and ears on these cars. Over and above the tracker devices and the marshals and the supercar, we've got mandatory radio points, which I just mentioned. They count the cars going past as well. And if there's a gap or a car missing, they report it immediately. There's also a responsibility on the competitors that if they pass a car with an SOS board out, that they too report the incident to the mandatory radio. The protections for the crews is pretty much bulletproof. So yeah, you don't get a lot of protection as a marshal. And all I've talked about when I talked about preparation was keeping yourself warm and well fed. 
But really, maybe I should have mentioned that fireproof overalls would be a great idea. I think they can be bought in, in most motorsport outlets and most personal protective equipment stores carry them as well. I think they come in a wide variety of orange, which uh, at least will match your tabard. Okay, so the first type of incident we're going to look at is the simple one. The one where a car has missed its breaking point and end up on top of a ditch. Stop, take a breath, look, see if you can see anything that can help you make a decision and listen, is there something going on that might need attention? For example, an engine running or a crackling of a fire starting. Uh, as you can see, car number two has gone off the stage and is stuck on top of that ditch. Everybody's okay, nobody's hurt, but he's stuck on top of the ditch. The MSA say that ensure a lookout is positioned to warn those on the scene of any approaching vehicles. That'll be you or another marshal. Spectators love to help a stuck in car. And sure as can be, no sooner is the marshal in place, keeping an eye out for everyone, doesn't the spectators all turn up? And they're pushing and they're shoving and they're pulling and they're pushing and they're all working against each other and the car's going nowhere. So for you it's whistle, voice, eyes and ears and probably a bit of adrenaline pumping as well. But don't let the adrenaline take over. This is a time for a calm head. You need to see what they're doing and keep an eye out for cars coming towards them. Assisting cars on the stage is probably one of the riskiest situations you'll encounter. When I say risky, that includes risks to pretty much everyone at the incident, which also includes those on their way up the stage in the next competing car. If there's people on the stage helping a stricken competitor, assume that they'll have completely forgotten that the stage is still alive. Your task will be to prioritise their safety. You'll never get them to stop what they're doing. So the next best thing you can do is become their eyes and ears. You might need to get over a crest or round a bend to find an appropriate place to watch both them and oncoming traffic from. Don't take any risks, your safety has to be your first priority. Blow your whistle to warn those at the incident scene, and if necessary, warn the oncoming competitors by waving them down. If you have to hold a competitor, take their number and report that detail after the incident is over. Okay, just for a minute or two, let's take a quick look at how you do actually go about reporting an incident. In your marshal's pack, there's a phone number. That number takes you straight through to the bunker. If you have a serious incident on your stage, then that's the number you need to phone. However, if you have an incident on your stage and you're not sure what to do, or you need advice before you go to the bunker, talk to your stage commander, provided you've got connection. If you haven't got a connection to your stage commander, Go straight to the bunker. But like everything else, there's a right way and a wrong way of reporting an incident. Remember what the MSA said? Breathe, take a breath first, look, and then listen. Analyze the situation and decide what needs to be done and what information you want to relay before you make that phone call. It'll only take you a second or two more to get all them ducks in line. Let's have a listen at how this can be done right and how this can be done wrong. Hello? Right, here, you need to stop this stage, you need to stop this stage, there's a car upside down, the road is blocking, and there's people everywhere. Nobody out of the car at first, and it's, it's a whole mess, a whole mess. The other marshal, he's ran up the road, he's ran away from here, he must be, I don't know what's going on with him, he's away. And, and, oh, I, I get... What? Yeah, yeah, they're out of the car now, yeah, but they weren't at the start. Number, I don't know what the number is, they're upside down. Oh, the number of the junction. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. Hello. Hello, I just want to call an incident we've had here at Post 4. My name is Robert Hart. Uh, car number 20 has overturned and had partially blocked the stage. There was no injury to either the co-driver or the driver. Spectators got involved uh, to clear the car and I went up the stage and stopped the next car. Uh, the next car was car number 9. I held him for about 20 seconds. The spectators cleared the stricken car to the side and we released the car. That's car 9. Hopefully the uh, tracker device will confirm the amount of time you're stationary for. The crew from car 20 are okay and the driver is currently placing his warning triangle about 100 metres up the road. So the spectator that was bouncing on the front of the car has now decided to come up and have a chat with you. The MSA say, you may also receive offers of assistance from spectators. 
Where these offers are made with the best intentions, please remember that unlike you, they will not have signed on and are not therefore covered under the MSA insurance. So offers off, I slow the cars down, you go way down there and help, it just can't happen. So what do you need to do next? Well the MSA say make sure that the warning triangle is out and the OK or the SOS board is out depending on whether they need assistance or not. This might seem a bit trivial but remember that each crew has responsibility to their fellow competitors. If no board is out or an SOS board is displayed it is their duty to stop at the next radio point to report the incident. The OK board is what we all want to see and a well placed warning triangle is very important. The warning triangle should be positioned 100 metres from the scene where possible. This will be enough to have those following competitors back off, which can prevent multiple accidents at the same locations. By the way, make sure the right side of the board is displayed. After a bit of an off, the crew can be a bit adrenaline charged and confused. Again, you're the calm one. Look out for everyone, that includes yourself. So remember when you're dealing with the competitors that are just out of the car, well, they'll be upset. So guide them to somewhere safe, as gently as possible. Speak to them once you get them to a safe area. Ask them are they okay. Ask them if they have any pain anywhere. And if they have any pain, then you may need to call for help. Okay, so that's a minor incident covered. Maybe we should take a look at something slightly more serious. Before we go there, it's important to recognise that each stage of the event will have a plethora of safety people who are there to look out for both you, the spectators, and the competitors. We have a rescue unit, we have a paramedic, the ambulance, and we have a recovery vehicle, all at the start line. If you are the first marshal on the scene, the best thing you can do is speak to the crew. Reassurance is very, very important. Remind them that assistance is on its way and we'll be with them in a few minutes. While reassurance and calm is very important, there's a number of actions that need to take place in tandem with that reassurance. As with the incident with the BMW stuck on top of the ditch, the first thing that the MSA tell you to do is stop, look and listen. The MSA also tell us to warn other competitors of the incident. If there is an incident on the stage and the road's blocked and the stage is going to be stopped, there'll still be a handful of cars in the stage that started before the stage was stopped. Therefore you're going to have to get someone back up the stage to direct them in to the roadside and get them stopped. When I say direct them into the roadside you need to get enough room to let the ambulance and the rescue vehicle through. So as you can see this time our BMW driver has gone over the fence and hit a tree. Uh, we've got two marshals down there attending to them. Uh, they've got the other spectators to stay back because they've realised how serious it is as well. Ando sent a marshal up the road um, who stopped the other competing cars. That marshal advised those crews that the stage is stopped but not blocked and they should therefore proceed past the scene with extreme caution. Remember that if the stage was blocked these cars will need to be stopped before the incident and held over to one side to allow room for the services to get in to the incident. Hello, my name's Ben Shippey. I'm a consultant in anaesthesia and intensive care medicine in Dundee. And I'm really grateful for you taking a few minutes of your time to listen to me tell you how you might make a real difference to stage safety. If there is an incident in a stage, you're going to be the first people there. We are not going to get there first. We're going to come in response to what you tell us. So what we need to do is give you some simple things that you can do to make that safe and effective for you and useful for us. In effect, what they are, are a safe approach to an incident, some early, simple first aid, and some information that you need to gather and pass on to the stage rescue services so that we can assist you. If you see an SOS board in the stages this weekend, you must stop. You must find out what the problem is, and you must pass that information on to the next comp competitor, who will then pass the information on to a radio point. You've then got to make an assessment of the situation and do some basic first aid. Do that safely. 
Decide whether it's safe for you to approach the vehicle. Use the car if you can to protect you from other oncoming cars. Stabilize it as well you can, and if there is a risk of a fire or an actual fire, activate the vehicle's fire extinguishers. Isolate the electrics before you go anywhere near the vehicle. Establish as far as you can some information to pass on. You need to know what's happened, you need to know where it is, you need to know the number of the car and the number of casualties. It's also really useful if we've got a brief description of what's the matter with them. We're not looking for diagnoses here, but conscious, unconscious, breathing, not breathing, pain in the leg is really useful for us to decide what to do. To do that, you need to talk to the casualty. Approach them from the front. One of the things we're trying to do is stop them moving their necks. And if you come at them from the side, they will turn to look at you. So come at them from the front. Ascertain whether they're conscious or unconscious. Talk to them. If they talk back, they're conscious, it's all good. If they're not, we need to move. We need to open their airway. And people can sometimes be very worried about moving the neck in this situation. Don't be. Open the airway. You can do that by putting two fingers behind the angle of the jaw and pulling forwards. Air should start to move. If they're breathing and air is moving, we can relax. If they're not breathing, they need to be out of the car. Undo their straps, cut them if you have to, Pull them out, do not worry about moving the cervical spine. Lie them on their back, put your hands on the sternum, push down about two inches or four centimeters if you've moved to metric. Release and press again. Repeat that about a hundred times a minute. Don't stop until we get there. If the patient is conscious, but they're in pain or unwell, there are some things that you can do to help them they might be shocked. That means something a bit different to us than it does in the media. It means they're bleeding so much that they can't maintain their blood pressure. If you can see where that blood's coming from, put a dressing or a handkerchief onto the wound and push hard. Keep pushing. Don't stop until we get to you. If there's a fracture, it will be painful. Don't try and straighten it. Support it with a sling or a limb or rest it on something. Leave it there, we will get to you and we will straighten it. If there's a burn, you can cool it by pouring cold water over it if you've got some clean water and covering it with a plastic bag or some cling film just to keep the dirt and infection out. Leave that there, don't be tempted to keep looking at it, we'll deal with it when we get there. When we do, don't stop what you're doing. You can be really helpful to us in controlling the scene reassuring and looking after casualties, and we want to know from you what you've found and what you've done. So in summary, look after yourself this weekend. If you do come across an incident, stop, make a quick assessment, pass some information on, look after the casualties that you find and stick about. I hope I haven't put you off having had a great weekend, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you out on the stages sometime soon. Okay, there's little I can add to that, but there's a couple of points I'd like to touch on. When you arrive at your junction and meet the people that you're going to work with, decide what role you will fulfill if there's an incident. It may not suit you to be the person that's in the car opening the airway. If you're angry like me, you'll want to be up the road stopping the traffic. If you're the volunteer that stays with the car and find yourself having to open an airway by pulling the jaw forwards as shown, uh, remember you can't just do that and then stop. You're going to have to hold that position until help gets there. Make sure you're in a position that you're comfortable, that you can stay there for a few minutes until help arrives. When help does arrive, don't wander off. Your job's not over. You've got a lot of information about how the accident happened. You were the person that's seen what happened and seen how the crew reacted immediately after it. So when appropriate, advise the experts on what you've seen and what you know about the incident. It will be very, very useful to them. Okay, that was a tough enough section. Remember, the probability of a serious incident happening at your location is really, really low. So don't let this video put you off marshalling.